To understand what dependency injection is, let's start by looking at two classes, my service and my logger. My service uses the logThis method of my logger to log messages to a file anytime my service performs an important operation. Since my service uses some of the functionalities of my logger, like the logThis method, we say that my logger is a dependency of my service. Now, in order for my service to start using my logger, it creates an instance of my logger in its constructor, and after that, it can start calling the logThis method. At first glance, it doesn't look like this presents any problems, but consider what happens when the authors of my logger decide to slightly modify it so that a new MyFileWriter object needs to be passed on its constructor, because that's where the output file is now defined. The required changes look simple to implement, but they reveal a few important problems. My service is tightly coupled to my logger in such a way that anytime my logger changes, there's a need to also change my service, as it happened here when the constructor started requiring a MyFileWriter instance. My service needs to know how to construct and configure the MyLogger dependency, like is the case here with the MyFileWriter object, which needs to be configured with an appropriate file to send the output logs. This makes it hard to test my service since unit tests won't be able to mock or stop my logger. An output.log file will always be created, which would slow down tests and this assuming that the tests have access to a place to write files to. Fortunately, there's a better way to do this using what is known as dependency injection. Let's go back to my service and its my logger dependency. My service still uses the logThis method, but this time my logger is not explicitly constructed by my service. Instead, my logger is passed in as a constructor parameter. My logger is injected into the my service constructor. This way, my service doesn't need to know how to construct or configure the logger, it just receives it and can start using it right away. But if my service doesn't construct the logger, who does it? Well, ASP.NET Core provides the iService provider, which is what is known as a service container. Your application can register my logger and any other dependencies with iService provider during startup, which is typically done in your program.cs file. Then later, when a new HTTP request arrives and your web app needs an instance of my service, the service container will notice its dependencies and it will go ahead and resolve, construct, and inject those dependencies into a new instance of my service via its constructor. This enables multiple benefits for your application. To start with, my service won't be affected by changes to its dependencies. It doesn't matter how many times the constructor of my logger changes, there is no need to change my service. Moreover, my service won't be created instances of my logger, so it doesn't need to know how to construct or configure it. If your application uses minimal APIs, dependencies can also be injected as parameters to your minimal API endpoints. Finally, dependency injection opens the door to using dependency inversion. But what is dependency inversion? The dependency inversion principle states that code should depend on abstractions as opposed to concrete implementations. Let's bring again our MyService class and its MyLogger dependency. Currently, MyService depends directly on MyLogger, which allows it to write logs to an output file. But let's say that now we're moving to the cloud and we need to start sending logs to some sort of cloud service. For this, we would like MyService to start using a new CloudLogger class. We could modify MyService to receive and use a CloudLogger instance instead of a MyLogger instance. However, what we can do instead is modify my service so that it depends on a new iLogger interface, which provides all the required logging functionality. Then we can have both MyLogger and CloudLogger implement this new interface. With this, we are decoupling my service from the logger dependency, allowing it to use MyLogger, CloudLogger, and any future logger implementations without ever having to modify my service. The only thing that the different loggers need to do is to implement the interface that my service depends on. In terms of the code, this is how you would now inject the logger into my service. So the main benefit of using the dependency inversion principle is that dependencies can be swapped out without having to modify the class that uses them. But also, it is now much easier to test my service since the logger dependency can be easily mocked or stopped. And finally, your code is now cleaner, easier to modify, and easier to reuse. Now, before we start using dependency injection in our code, there is one more important concept to understand, which is the service lifetime. We now know the basics of dependency injection in ASP.NET Core. We know that on startup, your application will register the dependencies, like my logger here, and later, when an HTTP request arrives, 
iService Provider will resolve, construct, and inject an instance of my logger into a new instance of your class, my service in this example. What is not clear is what happens when a new request arrives. Should iService Provider create a brand new MyLogger instance for the new request, or should it reuse the same instance? What if another service that also has a dependency on MyLogger needs to be created in response to a new request? Same MyLogger instance or new MyLogger instance? The answer to this lies in the service lifetime, which you configure when you register MyLogger with iService Provider. There are three available service lifetimes, so let's take a look at each of them. Let's say that MyLogger is a very lightweight and stateless service, so it's okay to create a new instance every single time any class needs it. In that case, you will register MyLogger with the addTransient method. When the first HTTP request arrives, the iService provider, as usual, will resolve, construct, and inject a new instance of MyLogger into my service. However, when a new HTTP request arrives, iService Provider will construct and inject a brand new instance of my logger, which has nothing to do with the first instance. Furthermore, if there's any other service that participates in any of these HTTP requests and also has a dependency on my logger, it will also receive a brand new instance of it. So, transient lifetime services are created each time they are requested from iService Provider. What if my logger is a class that keeps track of some sort of state that needs to be shared across multiple classes that participate in an HTTP request? In that case, you would register my logger with the addsCode method. Here, when an HTTP request arrives, the iService provider will again resolve, construct, and inject an instance of my logger into my service. But if there's any other service that participates in the same HTTP request and that also has a dependency on my logger, it will receive the exact same instance of this dependency. However, if a new HTTP request arrives, the service container will create and inject a brand new instance of my logger instead, totally related to the previous instance. So, scoped lifetime services are created once per HTTP request and reused within that request. Finally, let's say that my logger is not cheap to instantiate and it keeps track of a state that should be shared with all classes that request it during the entire lifetime of your application. Then you would register my logger with the add singleton method. As usual, when an HTTP request arrives, the iService provider will resolve, construct, and inject a new instance of my logger into my service. And if there is any other service that participates in that same HTTP request and that also has a dependency on my logger, it will receive the exact same instance of this dependency. But furthermore, if a new HTTP request arrives, the service container will once again provide the same instance of my logger to any of the classes that request it. And it will keep doing so until the application is shut down. So, Singleton lifetime services are created the first time they are requested and reused across the application lifetime. Now that you understand dependency injection in ASP.NET Core and the different service lifetimes, let's get back to the code and see how we can use these concepts to register the repository instance needed to interact with the data. So if you remember, if you go back into endpoints, games endpoints.cs, uh, you remember that uh, we are creating currently the instance of our repository right here at the start of the map games endpoints uh, method, right? So what we want to do now is to switch this so that instead of this, we are going to be injecting one instance of repository into each of the endpoints that actually need it. That way, we're going to be avoiding the coupling that we have today between our games endpoints class and the uh, concrete in mem games repository instance. So the first thing to do is to go back into repositories and in main game repository. Uh, what, we want to, what we want to do here is to first extract the interface of this class so that later on we can inject that interface into the game's endpoints class, right? So that that way that class doesn't need to know really exactly which concrete instance is being created. And so to extract the interface, what you can do, I mean, you can create it manually, but there's also a good way to do this automatically. If you just click on the in main game repository, type over here, you can use this light bulb over here and just select the option that says extract interface, the very first one there, go there, and that's going to go ahead and generate the interface for you. Okay, 
And not only that, uh, now our class is actually implementing that interface, as you can see. And now that we have the interface, we would also rename that interface because that name is not making much sense, right? It should be a little bit more generic. So I'm going to just tap F2 in my keyboard here so that we can do a proper refactoring of this interface. So this, let's just rename this one into iGames repository, right? So it's more generic. Hit enter and notice that now uh, we have the brand new name over here and also we have that brand new name as the, the one that is implemented by InMem Games repository. And with that in place, the next thing that we want to do is to move this interface out into its own file just for better code organization. So I'm going to click on the light bulb over here and then you can select the extract interface, sorry, the move type to icons repository option over here, there. And by doing that, as you can see, the file has been moved or created over there in icons repository, right? And it's out of our in-main games repository class. We go back into iGames repository, you're going to see it's just the same interface, but it has been moved into a new file. And with that in place, we are ready to start taking advantage of this new interface in our games endpoints file. So let's go back into games endpoints, and I'm going to collapse this so that we can see a bit better. And the first thing to do here is to stop declaring, of course, the repository like this. We're not going to have that coupling anymore, so that goes away. And then what you want to do is to, like I said, inject the, the interface into each of our endpoints. And to do that, all you have to do really is just go into the parameter that's defined for each of our endpoints and declare the type. So you're going to say I games repository, repository, like that. And just by doing that, whenever a request comes in that matches this endpoint, the service container is going to find out uh, which is the class that implements iGain repository, and we're going to be doing the registration in a second. Uh, and it's going to instantiate in mem games repository, and it's going to provide that instance or inject that instance right here so that the endpoint can start using it like it is doing right now. And we can do the same thing with uh, each of the other endpoints. So let's go ahead and let, let me just, uh, just copy this. And then let's enter this as a first parameter in the next endpoint, the get by ID, just like that. And let's do the same thing for the other endpoint. So let's go to my post, let's put it over here. And by the way, the order, it doesn't matter. The order of parameters, you can do it in any order. I'll just uh, prefer to do this uh, as a first parameter for now. So let's go for map put. And then finally, let's go for map delete. And so, yeah, with that, there's no more coupling between games endpoints and our repository, uh, our repository class. Everything is being done via dependency injection. So notice that games endpoints, now it doesn't really know which uh, a specific type is being used as a repository. It only knows that there is an interface and it will work with that interface, right? So somebody else has to figure out what is the actual concrete instance. So that's what we have to do now. So now we have to do the actual registration of the concrete instance that's going to map to iGames repository. So let's go back into our explorer and into program.cs. Let's grab this. And in order to register your instance of the repository, what you want to do is take advantage of your builder object, right? So what you can do is just say builder.services, and services here is the entire services collection that of the services that have been registered uh, into uh, our builder uh, instance. Right, so this is the collection where you can add your services into. So to add a service, what you have to do is just do dot, and then you're going to find a bunch of uh, methods here to represent the different ways that you can register the service. So you can do, for instance, a transient, right? If you wanted to do a transient service, or you could do add scoped for a scoped service, or you can do add singleton also. Now, the type of registration that we want to do here is at singleton. But before we do that, let's actually take a look at at scoped and let's see what would happen if we use it at scoped as opposed to at singleton. So let's do at scoped. And what you want to do now is just to switch into uh, exactly to declare the interface first. So in this type parameter, let's do iGames repository. All right. And to use that, we'll have to step into there and do control dot so that we can use gamestore.api.repositories, this very first one over here. Okay, so we're using that namespace now. And then you specify the concrete type that you want to get activated whenever somebody asks for that interface. So in that case, in our case, it's going to be in mem games repository. So with that, we have registered our service with the service container. And now let's see how this uh, works uh, in action, right? So let's see what happens. So let's do control J. I'm going to do .NET run. And now let's go back into Postman over here. And we're going to try our first request, which is the one that gets all the games, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click on send. And 
As expected, this is working fine, right? We are getting our three initial set of games from the in-memory repository. And now let's go ahead and create a brand new game in our post request over here, which is going to be our Minecraft game, right? Just like we did before, I'll click on send, and our Minecraft game has been created. However, let's see what happens if we now retrieve that full list of games, right? So the expectation is that it should have our Minecraft game over there. So let's go back here and let's go ahead and click on send once again. And notice this, there is no more any, I mean, the Minecraft game is just not showing up here. There is no Minecraft game. We only have uh, one, two, and three, the three initial games, right? No matter how many times we create uh, the Minecraft game, so I'll click on send and it was a success, right? It says here that it did got created, but if you go back into get all, click on send and the game is just not there. So what is happening there? Well, if you go back into, into our API, the reason why this is happening is because we are using the scoped service lifetime. This means that anytime we receive a new request in any of our endpoints, a brand new instance of in main game repository is going to be created, right? So in games endpoints over here, when the initial request comes for, for map get, then we get one instance of repository over here. And then whenever we do the post call, right, we get another instance of repository, a completely different instance. And furthermore, when we do get, once again, we get another instance of repository over here. And let's see if we can see this more uh, more explicitly by using breakpoints. So let's go back to in main case repository, and I'm going to put a breakpoint over here, right, where is, which is where we are pretty much creating our uh, games list. So this time I'm going to do F5, okay, to start debugging. And so I'll go back to Postman and I'm going to do the initial send over here. I notice we have our breakpoint over here, right? The games instance is going to be created in main games repository. So we hit play. And so that retrieves the list of games. And now we go back into post and we're going to go ahead and create a new game, right? So click on send. And notice that we're going, we're back in VS Code. And once again, the list is going to be recreated because this is a new instance, because this is a new request, because we are using the scoped service lifetime, right? So a new instance gets created. And of course, that's not going to have a, our brand new game. And in fact, if we go back to get all, we click on send, and then once again, a brand new instance is getting created. And so that is that is what happening here. That's, that's what this is not working. And so because of this, what we want to do is just go back to VS Code. I'm going to stop this, close that. And then let's go back to program.cs. Uh, what we want to do now, just while we're using the in mem game repository is to switch from add scope to add singleton. So that's going to make sure that we only get one instance of the repository for the entire lifetime of the application, right? Uh, this is likely not what you want to do when you start moving into database access, but for now, so that we can actually play nicely with this API, we want to stick to in mem uh, and with singleton, but later on we can switch to something else, right? And just for our curiosity's sake, uh, let's see what happens now that we have a singleton, right? So let's do F5 now. All right, let's go back to Postman. And then once again, let's retrieve the full list of games, click send. And as expected, we hit the breakpoint over here where we are declaring the games array or the game list. Click play, let's go back to Postman. And here we have the full list of games. And then let's go back to post. And this time let's go ahead once again and create a brand new game, click send. And notice that no breakpoint got hit, right? So there's no breakpoint, go back to VS Code. The breakpoint has not been hit, right? It's not there. And then if you go back to get, uh, get all games, click send. Again, there's no breakpoint because the instance is being reused, right? There's no need to create it again. And now we do have our fourth game right there. So only one instance is created because it is a singleton.